Hello, this is Math 101 Fibity. This is lesson 10, and in this lesson we're going to do rational inequalities. We have already in this course did polynomial inequalities and rational equations, and so now the, we're going to tackle rational inequalities. So a rational inequality is when you have a inequality involving a rational expression. So for example, we have a rational expression like p of x over q of x, and we ask when is this rational expression greater than zero. This is a rational inequality. And px and qx are polynomials. And like always, we exclude all solutions such that the denominator is zero. And again, similar to what we needed to recall with polynomial inequalities, recall the following from, um, from signs of real numbers. If we have a positive number multiplying a positive number, we get a positive number. If we get a positive number multiplied by a negative number, we get a negative number. If we get a negative number times a negative number, we again get a positive number. Same thing is going to happen if we divide positive and negative numbers. A positive number divided by a positive number is a positive number. A positive number divided by a negative number is a negative number. Likewise, if you flip this, a negative number divided by a positive number is going to be a negative number, and a negative number divided by a negative number is always going to be a positive number. And also, the way powers, powers work, if you have some expression to the power of n, it's going to be positive if n is even. If you have some expression to an odd number, it's going to be positive if that expression itself is positive and n is odd. If you have something negative and you're taking it to an odd power, you're going to also get something negative. So these are the basic facts from real numbers. Again, to recall the same facts we recalled when we did polynomial inequalities. And the procedure for solving rational inequalities is pretty much the same as solving polynomial inequalities. We write down all the points where our rational expression can possibly change sign. A rational expression in this example is going to be factored. We need to find all the x's such that this whole expression is going to be greater than zero. So the only way something can change sign is when either the numerator equals zero or the denominator equals zero. When the numerator equals zero, that means this expression may go from positive to negative there. And when the denominator is zero, this expression does not have those numbers in the domain, and that's also a potential place for the expression to change sign. So the factor of x minus 1 gives us the point x equals 1, a potential in changing the sign. This point, this factor x plus 3 gives us x equals negative 3, a potential point at which the sign can change. The factor x plus 4 gives us the number x equals negative 4, a potential place where the sign can change. And then we're going to look at the plot all these potential points, these partition points on the number line. So we have negative 4, negative 3, 1, and 5. And we have subdivided our real line into five parts. And there's four possible thing, four possible factors to consider and look at their signs. Let's look at anything that's greater than 5. If anything is greater than 5, then 
the two terms in the numerator are positive and the two terms in the denominator are positive. And our product and quotient of these numbers is still going to be positive. Now let's look what happens between 1 and 5. The only term that starts to be negative is x minus 5. The two terms in the, in the numerator is still positive, but x minus 5 is now negative. This means this product and quotient of all these four factors is going to be negative. What happens between negative 3 and 1? Well, between negative 3 and 1, which term begins to be negative? The x minus 5 factor is still negative, and now x minus 1, because we're below 1, is now negative. And the other term in the numerator and the other term in the denominator is still positive. But we have two total of two negatives here, so we're going to get still a positive answer. Let's look between negative 4 and negative 3. Again, you can take test points just like you could with polynomial inequalities. So between negative 4 and negative 3, the term the two terms in the numerator are now negative because we are less than negative 3, so x plus 3 is now a negative number. And x plus 4 still remains positive, but we have an odd number of negatives, and so now we have a negative between negative 4 and negative 3. And then finally, for the last piece, if your x is less than negative 4, all of them are negative, giving us a positive number because we have an even number of negatives. And so the final solution we want, when is this expression greater than 0? So the solution is the following union of intervals. Just like solutions for poly polynomial equations, solutions for rational equations are also intervals or unions of intervals. From negative infinity to negative 4, union negative 3 to 1, union 5 to infinity. So this is the final solution to a problem expressed as a union of intervals. So just like polynomial inequalities, you factor everything, look at all the factors if it's already factored, and determine where are the potential points or the partition points where my expression can change sign. Draw them on the number line and then analyze the sign of each piece of the real line. following example. We're going to look at this inequality, x squared plus 1 times x minus 6 cubed over x minus 3 squared and x minus 4, where we want to know when is this expression negative. Now, similar to an example we had with polynomial inequalities, there are some pieces here, some factors that are always, always positive. So, for example, this factor, x squared plus 1, is always positive. Also, x minus 3 squared is also always positive. Why? Because in both cases you have something squared. Something squared plus 1 is also positive. Something squared is always positive. This piece, x minus 6 cubed, is positive if x minus 6 is positive because it's an odd power. It is negative 
if x minus 6 is negative. And so here we have a potential point of potential point where things can change sign is at x equals 6. And then the last piece, x minus 4, can possibly contribute to a sign change at, at x equals 4. So we can ignore 3, and certainly we cannot include any complex numbers on our real line. A common mistake is to factor x squared plus 1 into x plus i and x minus i, and then write some kind of inequalities involving them. Whenever we're solving inequalities, we're always looking for real subsets of the real line. So here, the possible places where the expression can change sign is only at 4 or 6. So when everything is above 6, all the four pieces are positive, and so we have something positive. Whenever we're between 4 and 6, the, the x squared plus 1 is always positive, the x minus 3 squared is always positive, the x minus 4 is still positive, but the x minus 6 cubed now turns negative, and then the whole thing ends up negative. When we're less than 4, those two factors that are always positive remain positive, but our other two factors that can change sign do, and so we have an even number of negative things giving us a positive result. And so the final solution is we're looking for when is this expression below zero, that's when this expression is negative, and this is, happens on the interval from 4 to 6. And so this is the final answer. In both of these examples, our rational inequality was factored. Just like with rational equations and polynomial equations and polynomial inequalities, if our rational inequality is not factored, then our first, the very first thing that we need to do is to factor it and to make one side zero. So if we have something like this, 2x plus 17 divided by x plus 1 greater than x plus 5, we cannot start working with it right away. We first have to bring x plus 5 over to the left-hand side, put everything over a common denominator, and then factor everything. So let's start doing that. We have 2x plus 17 divided by x plus 1. Remember, when we have an inequality, you have to be careful to not multiply both sides by a variable. However, we can always subtract variables. So the first thing is to subtract the appropriate thing to make everything over, um, to make everything on one side be zero. Now we need to subtract these two, so we need to put it over a common denominator. So we have 2x plus 17 over x plus 1 minus x plus 5 times x plus 1 over x plus 1 greater than 0. Now the denominators are the same. We can subtract. This is 2x plus 17 minus x plus 5 times x plus 1 over x plus 1 greater than 0. Now we need to foil out that x plus 1, x plus 5, and then subtract, and then combine like terms. So we have 2x plus 17. Remember to multiply before you distribute the minus sign to avoid mistakes. And it's very important to get into the habit of rewriting your expression equation or inequality over and over again. 
And so here we have 2x plus 17. We're distributing the minus sign. Minus x squared minus 6x minus 5 divided by x plus 1 is greater than 0. We're looking at the, numer at the numerator. We have negative x squared. minus 4x plus 12 divided by x plus 1 greater than 0. Now I don't like to work with that negative x squared, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor that negative out and have x squared plus 4x minus 12 over x plus 1 greater than 0. I can multiply both sides of my inequality by negative 1. If I do that, I can do that, but I have to flip the inequality sign. You can work with a negative there, but it's probably going to be a bit more confusing. And now I need to factor the numerator. So I have x plus 6 times x minus 2 divided by x plus 1 less than 0. And now my inequality is in completely factored term and now I can look at the potential points at which uh, my expression can change sign. So the points are x equals negative 6, x equals 2, and x equals negative 1 coming in from all three factors. So I'm going to write my real line, and these points are negative 6, negative 1, and 2. And then I'm going to look at the signs of my three factors. So if everything is greater than 2, all three of them are positive. So I have a positive number. If we're between negative 1 and 2, then the x minus 2 ter term turns negative. If we're between negative 6 and negative 1, then the x plus 6 term is still positive, but then the x minus 1 term, the x plus 1 term turns negative. And if we're less than, so we are positive here, whereas we are negative between negative 1 and 2, and we're positive between negative 6 and negative 1. And then for the final, for the final piece, if we're less than negative 6, all three pieces are negative, giving us a negative sign. And so the final solution is when is all of this our final equation, our final rational equation that we were working with was this one. Remember, we flipped the sign in one of our computations. So we are looking for everything that's less than this expression. So we have negative infinity, comma, negative 6, union, negative 1, 2. So this is the final solution to this rational inequality. So just like polynomial inequalities, if your rational inequality is given to you not in factored form, if it's given to you where one side is not zero, you must first put it in a standard form, like we did here. We converted this rational inequality into a form where everything is factored, the numerator is factored, the denominator is factored, and then one side of the inequality is zero. Then we can analyze the signs on the real line only when it's in that form.